So many arrows flying towards Blackie. I genuinely think my heart may have stopped beating for a while. Blackie was going to die. And it was all my fault. And that was the immediate end for the prophecy. And why didn't she just fly away? Come on, dragon. Just fly away. She just stayed perched atop the highest tower of the castle. In those few seconds, I saw our whole plan tumble. I saw Kitty and me flee and to run away from responsibility and hide at the statue. I'd still have to rescue Patat. But the prophecy would be laughed at. It was the end. The arrows closed in on Blackie and this is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 43, Opposition As the arrows flew closer to Blackie, Nidak must have sent a panicked message. She hadn't been aware of it until the dragon spoke with a soothing tone. Worry not, fine is. Many of the arrows began tumbling back down, not even reaching within two meters of their target. The rare ones who did come closer never touched Blackie before also falling. Nedak let out a long breath. Even if an arrow could cover the distance, it would probably have lost most of its strength. Blackie was safe. Nidak turned back to Aba. Hmm? Oh, so you do remember I am still here. Aba laughed. Not to worry, I am only joking. I saw what happened with the dragon, but she appears to be safe on the tower. She lowered her voice. That is a good start for our prophecy. How do things look for the brown gold? And have you been able to speak to the you-know-who again? Did he agree with the plan? Can he hold out for another few days? They moved aside to get out of the way of a pair of guards passing by. Let's walk away from here, Nidak said. As they crossed the square towards one of the streets, they caught snippets of conversations. Every single one talked about the dragon and the prophecy. One stall had so many people standing around it, Neda couldn't see the owner. She did hear a woman shouting, Prophecy! Get your prophecy here! Only one quarter square ton! The full edition with our analysis of the days to come for a mere one square ton! Prophecy! Get your prophecy here! Neda and Aba shared a look and a nod. Nidak moved to push through the people for a copy of her own prophecy, but Aba stopped her with a hand on her shoulder. Wait here. Her eyes were locked on a young man coming out of the waiting people, holding a parchment. She stepped up to him. He frowned as he saw her, and when he spoke he made elaborate gestures. His voice, from the start, loud enough so Nidak could almost understand what he said gained in volume as he almost yelled. That's her? You should not meet with her! He pointed towards Nedak, uttered a few more unintelligible words and stormed off. Eba's lips still pressed together as she rejoined Nedak. My brother? She replied to Nedak's silent question as they strode away from the crowd. Come now, we should truly get away from here. What he said was right. I should not be seen with you, not for me but for your sake. The order is looking for you, which is no surprise. And we are true fools to be moving in the open like this, especially you. No insult meant. None taken. I know I'm a fool. Eva stopped, abrupt enough for Nadak to take a few more steps. My queen, she said emphasizing the word, but speaking it silently enough to not be overheard. I apologize for saying you are a fool. You are not, and you should never let anyone tell you so, especially yourself. It is not becoming of your future status. You have to be confident at all times. They began walking again, with a straight back and a straight face. Even if you are not certain of something, you have to pretend. Use words to guide people away from your ignorance. Were you never taught these tricks? I remember you said your parents never told you about Parallelo, which is why you did not know the rules. 
But surely they must have in the least raised you to act like a noble? Nidek didn't reply. She hailed the queen instead. They didn't teach you any specifics? They preferred you to be a fighter over a princess, did they not? It makes sense in a way, I suppose. But it is still strange. You meant to say my parents didn't teach me any manners, didn't you? At Eva's guilty face, Nedek wanted to chuckle. She couldn't. Having her short comments flung at her did sting, even if it was all true and mostly her parents' fault. They let me be free in what I wanted to do, and when I showed interest in fighting sports, they cheered me on. It eventually turned into my career. She lowered her voice to avoid a strong man overhearing her next words. But I never knew about Parallelo or the other realm, as I call this world, until three years ago, after they died. During the rest of the Quinn ride, they both stayed silent, lost in their own thoughts. Eva broke the silence. I did not ask him for the parchment. My brother. The idiotic way he acted made me forget all about the prophecy analysis that Fender was selling. Nedek uttered an annoyed sound. She'd forgotten about it as well, with her self-criticism and Aba's reaction to it. Aba added in a musing voice. We merely call our world, world. Is that not what you call the world you grew up in? And should this not be the other world, then, instead of the other realm? Or do you call your world realm? If so, what a silly name. Earth is what it's called, Nedak smiled. I suppose I could have called this one the other Earth. It would have made more sense. You've got a point. They arrived at the circle and walked the rest of the way to the stock house mindful of possible followers. No one stalked them, as far as I could see. Safe in the stockhouse, they could finally speak freely. The odds of the Quinn strongman having overheard them were slim, with their quiet voices and all the noise surrounding him. Tell me more about your brother, Nedek asked Eba. Did I not tell you about him yesterday? Eba walked around the large space of the dimly lit stockhouse. Her voice sounded forced, caused by looking up. This is a large space, is it not? High ceiling indeed. You said the plan to make this into a... Eba Berry? Nidak's no-nonsense tone made other woman snap her head towards her. Your brother? I may be wrong, because my memory isn't that trustworthy, but I'm pretty sure you haven't told me about him. She sat down on a crate against the wall, urging Eba to sit next to her. Your memory must be wrong. Eba lowered herself on the crate, her face showing the uncertainty she felt at the unconventional seat. She sighed as she saw Nedak's raised eyebrows. Apologies, my queen. Nedak softened her features, purposely relaxing her forehead, banishing the strict face but not allowing the inner feelings of discomfort to come to the surface. Once again, she stopped herself from telling Eva not to address her as my queen. She knew she'd have to get used to it. She had to accept people treating her this way and expecting her to act like a queen. I do not believe I told you about him, Eva sighed. He and I do not see along the same line. We hardly speak to each other. Thurbo is only my half-brother. My mother died when I was thirteen. It only took my father two years after her death to be merry and get his new wife, Quilla, pregnant too. My father is a good man, he truly is, but unfortunately he did also love her. 
she twisted his mind into joining the order of the end. I've already told you this part. He is a complete believer now, has been for years, my brother as well. He got even worse after his mother died. Died? Two? Oh no, so your father had two dead wives. Nidak flinched at her own question. It wasn't very subtle. Eva stroked Nedek's cheek. Do not worry, you did not insult. I do not mourn my mother any more. It has been a long time. As for Krilla, my father and her had stopped loving each other well before her death. They, it does not matter. This was about my brother. It is a classic story. I believe he may blame my father for his mother's death, even though he had nothing to do with it. Despite that, they still remained in the order together. It appears their belief in the end supersedes their despise for each other. Well, I mean to say, I do not believe my father despises Thurbo. He is his only son, after all. It does not matter either. What does matter is that Thurbo is not to be trusted, and I am quite certain he has already told someone about seeing us together. I do not know if I will be able to meet with you again. They may be keeping an extra eye on me from now on, so I will not be able to accompany you tonight. We may not see each other again, not until you receive the crown. Tonight? Nedak blinked. Had she missed something? Had she fallen asleep while still being awake? Had Ava said anything else but because of her babbling way of speaking? Nidak's mind hadn't grasped it? Eva laughed. Oh, you look cute when you are confused. But still Quilly, of course. She touched Nidak's knee, her smile wide. You did not believe there was not an organization opposing the order, did you? Of course there is. You have been listening to Nidak, Chapter 43, Opposition. Narrated, adventured, and lived through by myself, Nedag. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. As the arrows flew closer to Blackie, Nedag must have sent a panicked message. Message. As the arrows flew closer to Blackie, Nedag must have sent a panicked message. She hadn't been aware of it. Okay, this is not doing going well. Take three. Not to worry, I am only joking. I saw what happened with the dragon, but she appears to be safe on that tower. Not to worry, I am only joking. I saw what happened with the dragon, but she appears to be safe on that tower. Fuck it, bird. Are you gonna do it again? Not to worry, I am only joking. I saw what happened with the dragon, but she appears to be safe on that tower. Fucking hell. Let's do this. Last time, Nidak and Eva shared a look and a nod. <sighs> That's her? That's her? You should not meet with her? That's her? You should not meet with her. How do I make a boy's voice? Like, not a boy, but also not quite a man. I guess he is a man, I did say young man. It is not becoming of your future statues. It is not becoming of your future statues. Nidak's no-nonsense tone made other women's... What? Edit. Edit. Not allowing the inner feelings of discomfort to come to the... It only took my father two years after her death. death. It appears their belief in the end supersedes... He is only... He is... He is his only son, after all. She touched Nedak's knee, her, her smile wide. She touched, nailed it.